Today, I'm going to talk about the folklore of the cat, and very interesting it is too. Egil Thorson here. So we'll start off way back in ancient Egypt. Some of you may have seen a statue of a black cat with earrings. And that is the goddess Bastet. Now if you have problems of a sexual nature you would sacrifice a cat to Bastet. Those of you lucky enough to come to Derby Museum we actually do have a mummified cat. There's something like thousands, in fact, I think the total is about two million cats have been found. Where do they get all the cats from? Well, to be honest with you, some of them are made up of sticks and things like that. It is an offence in ancient Egypt to kill a cat. And if a cat died naturally, then it was traditional to shave your eyebrows as a sign of respect for the cat. So we've got that. Then we move on. The Vikings bought a different type of cat, the tabby cat over, uh, which we associate now as a nice friendly pussy cat. There are also cats which you avoided, like the wild cat, which is probably twice the size of a big domestic cat, and will tear your throat out. They are fierce pussy cats, and their ears are always seem to be down. So yeah, you know, you have to be careful of those. As I've said in previous videos, in Iron Age huts we've found that dog skeletons have been butchered for their meat, but not cats. So again, we've got this special feeling towards pussy cats. As we progress into the Viking times, we have the goddess Freya, goddess of love and sexuality. There's that link with Bastet. And her chariot was drawn by cats. And there are various sayings like, when the cat's away, the mice will play. There's another one about, uh, if you don't feed the cat, the, the mice will suffer. Things of that nature. But um, one of the negative associations with cats is, of course, that of the witches. Now, there's a saying in German, which I can't remember the German, but it says, in the dark, all cats are grey. People think, oh, black cat. No, there were grey cats. It was called Grimalkin, meaning grey cat. There are various traditions and superstitions, like if a black cat crosses you eight, it's bad luck. If a cat jumps over a coffin, again, bad luck. Poor pussy cats seem to suffer a lot. There's also, as I say, lots of traditions, and cats themselves... They've had good times and bad times. The tradition, as I say, they were persecuted at times. Another thing is, I don't know if it's still the case, but it used to be that a cat was always around the cookhouse in the Foreign Legion and disappeared. They ate it. We move on. The Romans, of course, had pussy cats as pets like anyone else. But in the Iron Age, slightly before Rome, we find on archaeological sites we find dog skeletons have been butchered for meat, whereas cat skeletons are never done. So obviously cats had something special about them. I have no idea what that is. So as we move on through, in the Saxon times, the goddess Freya, goddess of love and sexuality. Again, there's that link with Bastet. I don't know whether it was conscious or not. Her chariot was drawn by tabby cats. Later on, this gets perverted through the sort of 1300s to about 17th century, that they are familiars of the devil. You know, and then we get things like, if a black cat crosses your way, it's bad luck. A cat jumping over the coffin is a bad thing, although most cats would probably avoid it anyway. So other sayings like, you know, when the cat's away, the mice will play, or if you don't feed the cat, the mice suffer. There's another one, I'm not, it's a recent one. So you've got this positive-negative thing. There was a case of a monk who had a pet cat, 
who is very spoiled, whereas outside the monastery you get people persecuting them. They just go on cat hunts. Also at the time of the plague in 1665, they thought the cats were pushing the plague. They killed all the cats and dogs they could. Of course, they were keeping the rat population down, which um, basically was promoting the plague. There are various schools of thought on that. So anyway, we come along there. Now, interesting thing. My late father had a friend who was Belgium, and he was called Emil Jacques. He's dead now, bless him. And he was uh, in Belgium, in Bruges, the time the Nazis occupied his country. Of course, at that time, food got very short. It's just the way of things. And they started to eat cats. And he said the only difference between a rabbit and a cat was the shape of the ribs. I believe a cat's ribs are sort of more ovoid than a rabbit's. It also brought into mind that when you see rabbits at game shops, they're in the fur. And that's because they taste and look pretty much like a cat. Also, there's a mountain of law with cats. And people say, you know, I don't like cats, but they always come round me. Well, there's a good reason for that. Here's the etiquette of dealing with a cat. If you don't want a cat to come near you, stare at it straight in the eyes. It'll see you as a threat and it'll run off. If you like cats, look up and then look down like that and blink. Because you see cats do that. Next thing they'll come to you and start rubbing your chin with their chin. That's put their scent on you to make sure that you're all right. So, you know, that's pussycat etiquette, which is a useful thing to know. Today, pussycats and dogs are pretty well looked after. However, there are organisations that uh, care for cats and dogs, RSPCA Cats Protection League, Battersea Cats and Dogs Home. I'm reminded of a German phrase, you know, we talked earlier on about the persecution that witches had cats, as familiar as well. The name for a witch's cat was Grimalkin, and in German, I'll just use the paper here, it's Im Dunkeln sind alle Katzen grau. Translated, in the dark, all cats are grey, which is probably a reference, don't trust pussy cats. And I say, they're really nice creatures. Catnip, yeah, that's. We used to buy pussy cats when I was a kid, catnip mice, and it grows wild, and cats love it, they go ape over it. They play with it and roll around. Tom and Jerry, it's a weird thing. If you're from my generation, the, the violence done by a mouse to a cat boggles their mind. Nowadays, they won't allow it. It's a bit... Same with Sylvester and Tweety Pie. The cat is seen as nasty, evil, and gets beaten up and things dropped on it. But nowadays, it's not. And I'll be honest, it's not as good or as funny. But, you know, having said that, Time moves on, people's attitudes change. Another another 50 years might go back or might be even worse. But anyway, I would urge you, be nice to pussycats. Treat them right. People say, oh, they're not loyal. Well, they have their own lifestyle. They go around houses, they have a district, and they go around that. Just be glad that they're there with you. And if they settle with you, all well and good. And also, they keep the mice down good point okay i have spoken about cats maybe you've got some folklore about cats you'd like to tell us we'd love to hear it you know we've always got time for people who've got pussycat tails things like that will take us time same with comments leave us a comment we're always happy to hear from them maybe you'd like to subscribe press the bar and the bell we've got it right this time and or maybe uh, <laughs> Hashtag folk tales, uh, then we can get you there. And uh, maybe you've got ideas for videos of your own. Please let us know. Maybe you've got facts and figures you'd like to tell us. So anyway, I hope you've enjoyed it. And stay safe and make the world a happy place. Bye.